I was born in a Negro town. I do not mean by that the black backside of an average town. Eatonville is and was at the time of my birth a pure Negro town, mayor, town marshal, and all. It wasn't the first Negro community in America, but it was the first to be incorporated, the first experiment of self-government on the part of Negroes in America. And with these words, Zora Neale Hurston really places into context the importance of Eatonville for her as a cultural resource in a way to understand the lifestyles, the folkways of what she called, quote, the Negro furthest down. And Zora Neale Hurston's genius was to be able to take the primary resource or the primary research that she dedicated her life to and transform that research into compelling stories. First and foremost, Zora Neale Hurston is a wonderful storyteller. And as storytelling is a part of the universal human experience, um, she was able to bring to life uh, for her readers the essence of the cultural and aesthetic beauty that she saw in her, in her people. What I'd like to do is to have us look at um, a three or four minute overview a video production by the University of Central Florida's Zora Neale Hurston Institute for uh, Documentary Studies that will give you some sense of, uh, of the history of Eatonville before we talk about the voice of Zora Neale Hurston and its role in protecting that community. So let's go to the movies. The historical town of Eatonville, the town that Freedom built, is located in Orange County, Florida. Original homestead lots, 44 by 100, sold to the first settlers for $35 cash or $50 on a time payment plan. Eatonville was placed on the United States National Registry of Historical Places on February 3, 1998. continuously governed and operated by persons of African-American descent. I'm Bruce Mount, mayor of the town of Eatonville, the oldest African-American town in America, and this town was built on freedom, the town that freedom built. 27 men found it possible to create our own town. This small group of 27 African-Americans, however, refused to unflame their passion for their goal. The result is evidenced by a great little town. This is the oldest African-American town, so come and experience the historic town of Eatonville as we celebrate our 125th anniversary. It's really quite amazing how um, Americans don't seem to value that which is old, that which is actually the substance of who we are as, as a society and as a people. Um, in 1987, uh, the Orange County Board of County Commissioners determined that they were going to five-lane the two-lane road that runs through Eatonville. Now, I'm not exaggerating. The two-lane road of Eatonville is not larger than this room. It's not as large as this room. So you can imagine what would have happened to have a five-lane expansion. It really would have destroyed the town. The, the town is only 2,500 people to begin with. And a part of the fact, the reality was that in 1987, the political reality was that there was no single member districting. The county of Orange, approximately 80, 90%, maybe 85 to 90% white population, um, African-American population, about 12% the Spanish-speaking population of no historic, no statistical significance at that time. And so uh, Eatonville, being known as a poor, so a low socioeconomic community, well, the political realities were that if the county commission wanted to five lane that road, we were supposed to line up and say, yes, sir, if you want to come on through, we're ready for you. But that was not to be the case, because the people of Eatonville really had a history of being very active politically. 
being an incorporated community where you elect your officials, where you have a police department, where you have a fire department, all of that really was a part of the expression of civic pride that went back to the founding of the town. Uh, in Eatonville, there are really four anchors, religion, family, education, and civic pride. And so what the people of Eatonville wanted was a voice to express their opposition to the five laying of Kennedy Boulevard. And so the Association to Preserve Eatonville was founded. Now one of the first things that we did was to try to identify what other places that we could look to for models. Uh, we called Charleston, South Carolina. We talked to the people in New Orleans. We talked to the people in Savannah. Uh, we heard of what was going on in the Art Deco district. And in fact, the, it was always the same. You lose some buildings because some developers or developers have an inside track to government and they work their will. Uh, but there's also that kind of grassroots opposition that will not go away. And we were told, frankly, that if we could keep the county from turning dirt for five years, that we would probably win. In 1987 and 1988, the people of Orange County, the decision makers, the opinion shapers, had no idea of who Zora Neale Hurston was. They didn't even know what, what, what is a Zora? I mean, what, what kind of name is that? Is it, is it Zima? Is that drink that was being marketed? I mean, just what is Zora? Uh, so we said to them, maybe you don't know who Zora Neale Hurston is, but we can assure you that people around the world know Eatonville as a literary destination. And so we determined, um, we thought, how could we get the public to appreciate Eatonville and its significance? And we thought of a festival, a festival of the arts and humanities. And frankly, I think what really has allowed us to do what we have is that the intellectual and the aesthetic part of festival has been the thing that really has been the driver. Yes, we also have an outdoor festival of the arts the last weekend of the event. February 1, 2, and 3. And frankly, that's where the tens and tens and tens of thousands will come. But it is the, it's the intellectual portion of festival that I think has really captured people's attention.